a painted wood altar in a church in Poland. What we see going on here is a very ornate display for an altarpiece at the front of the church with many, many scenes of the joys of Mary, events in the life of Mary and Jesus being illustrated here. There are seven of them all together. And the main one here is Mary being assumed up into heaven and here being crowned. Interesting thing about this is, of course, the combination of the carving and the colors. Very dramatic. These wings, by the way, open up. You see it opened up as it would be on a day when a high mass was being said. On other days, these wings would be closed and the much less colorful display would be visible. Interestingly enough here, we can take a look at this figure close up. Gombrich does illustrate this. It looks rather, well, it looks rather plain here, of course. I mean, you see a, a nice looking face and a person kind of looking on one of the apostles here. But when you look at it up close, there's much more emotion and there's much more detail. And notice these wrinkles here, too. This is a lot of work gone into this to make it realistic. And that this is not necessarily a beautiful face either. This is intended to be realistic in that way as well. So from a distance, it looks like the composition is very grand and magnificent. But up close, you can see that a lot of the Renaissance concepts of realism have affected the artist who created this. The ending of this chapter starts talking about printing, which is a very interesting subject. This is a woodcut. This is relief printing. And what that means is that the areas that are not intended to print are carved away. They're relieved. So this is carved in reverse to the way that's the mirror image of the way it would print. What's happening here is the artist is carving away the wood to leave the image raised, these lines. Now, because this is carved in wood, the thickness of the line reaches a certain limit. You can't make it very thin because the wood wouldn't be strong enough to take the ink and then the pressure of paper being pressed onto this. This is like a rubber stamp. An artist would carve this. It would be inked and paper pressed onto it. The image would transfer, and it was a way of printing things like this. These letters could be also carved into the wood, but of course, once you carve this in the images, that was all this would ever print. This was called woodblock printing, and if several of these pictures were put together into a book, it would be called a block book. This is a different type of printing process. This is called engraving. And you'll notice here, if you compare these two, this has lines only of a certain thinness. You can't go much thinner than that, and consequently, it looks like a poster. Here, the lines can be very, very thin. Engraving is a type of printing done for currency. What's happened here is that the artist has scraped very fine lines into a copper plate. And having done that, he can make the lines close together for very dark areas, or not so close together for lighter areas. So the whole shading process here is done with very fine lines in the distance that they're spaced apart. In order to print with a flat plate like this with scratches in it, ink is smeared over the entire plate, and then the plate is wiped clean. The ink remains in the grooves that have been scratched in the copper plate. And then if a piece of paper is placed on top of it and a great deal of pressure is applied, the paper gets pushed into the grooves just a little bit, enough to pick up the ink that's sitting there, and that's how the printed image is made. With American currency, if you want to see how this works, take out any kind of fairly new bill, uh, not a worn one, because the effect won't be quite the same. But if you take out a piece of currency, you can run your fingernail over it, and you'll see there are little ridges where the ink is. That's because currency is printed with an engraving process. A steel plate has got lines scraped in it, ink is rubbed on it, the plate is wiped clean, and then under high pressure, paper is pressed into it, and the ink from the groove transfers to the paper, and it actually is allowed to dry with a little bit of a ridge to it. So engraving is a high-quality printing process. What it did for the artist was, of course, require a great deal of skill. It's a rather unforgiving process, because if you make a mistake and you scrape a line someplace where you didn't want it, you can't erase it. So not only does the artist have to have the ability to lay out the composition, that is, within this area, to put the objects in such a way that they abide by whatever rules he's following, either symmetry or, in this case, by placing the main object to be pictured, here the Virgin Mary, her head, directly in the middle. As Gombrich points out, if you were to draw lines like this, and I'm doing a rather crude job of it, 
like this, those lines would actually cross in the center. Let's take a look at the composition here. This is Jesus in an abandoned sort of a structure, a church or a chapel structure. It's not actually a very realistic scene in that way because nothing in the Bible mentions this sort of a structure where baby Jesus was ever at. The right elements are here. There's Mary and Joseph and here's a donkey and then here's a uh, an ox, and here's the baby Jesus, and then there's some shepherds over here and an angel talking to them, and then various other people coming to visit. Interesting enough, the reason he chose this, we think, is that by having this sort of a ruined chapel here, he was able to have a rationale for having a dark background behind these figures, and they would stand out better in this way, as opposed to just having an arbitrarily shaped dark background. What I'd like for you to take from this is an understanding of these two printing processes. The printing process that we looked at here, relief printing, the areas that are to print remain high enough to catch the ink and transfer it to the paper. In engraving, it's the opposite. It's the grooves that are cut into a flat plate that capture the ink, and that's what transfers them to paper. The other thing is, of course, that engraving can produce a much higher quality of image. Now, later on, in the subsequent chapter, Gombrich does talk about a variation of engraving called etching, where the plate is coated with wax, and the artist uses a fine pin to scratch lines in the wax. Then the plate is dipped in acid, and the acid can attack the metal through those scratches where the wax has been removed so the metal is exposed, and the acid then eats the lines into the plate. From that point on, the etched plate is used very much like an engraved plate for doing printing. With etching, that variation on this process of engraving does allow for the artist to make a mistake and then correct himself because if he removes wax with a pin and decides that's not where he wants to line, he simply fills it in with melted wax again and tries again. So you can sort of erase your mistakes with that. This type of printing is called relief printing. The name for this in Italian name is intaglio printing. So intaglio encompasses both engraving and etching. And that's the end of the slides for chapter 14.